Hey there, neighbor. Welcome to Wild Homestead Living. I'm Kevin. And I'm Julie, and this is our September Homestead Hangout, part of a series where we update you on everything that's been happening with us over the last month. If September had a theme, it was taking advantage of the last of the good summer weather to finish projects both on and off the homestead. And we've been really busy and are excited to share all with you. So let's get started. Early in September, we went to visit family on Whidbey, which is a large island in Puget Sound about two hours from our homestead. We spent a full day watching wildlife, walking the beach, and eating local seafood. September marks the beginning of the fall mushroom hunting season, and this month Julie and I took two trips into the woods to seek chanterelles and other edible mushrooms. There's some right there. I'm gonna get out my mushroom bag. So we just found our first chanterelles and you almost can't even see them. They're hidden by this moss, but they have a different color than just about everything else in the forest. They have this beautiful kind of apricot -y golden color. And there's a couple of them here. And I use a knife to just kind of cut part of the stem. Like so. so I'm just gonna put it in my bag, like so. Here's the other one. On this one, you can really see the structure of the gills. They're very different than any kind of mushroom. They're very tight and short and they kind of blend in. And they have a really distinct, beautiful kind of apricot -y smell. The vast majority of the chanterelles that we find are the typical golden color. A much smaller number are these kind of faded yellow or even white chanterelles. Uh, I don't know if they actually taste better, <laughs> but I think because they're so rare, we have kind of imagined that they taste better when we cook them up. So we're pretty excited. We found a pretty large patch of them here and they all look like the, the lighter color or the white chanterelle. You can see on the underside, it's super light colored compared to the, the other ones that we've collected today. I need to sharpen my knife. <sighs> so when we cut these, you can see like there's a clear disturbance here. You can see all these stems. Uh, we always go ahead and pull some of the needles and moss back over those for two reasons. Like when we come through the forest, we like to feel like we're the only ones here. I assume other people look for that kind of solitude as well. When you see those cut stems, that's a constant reminder that there are others in the forest. Covering these up also helps us conceal the location of our white chanterelle patch so that others don't come and mark it on their maps and come back next year. Mushroom hunting is very competitive. Our first trip netted us a handful of mushrooms, but after a bit of rain, our second trip was much more successful. On the second trip, we were finding mushrooms almost everywhere we looked. Soon, our bags were actually starting to feel a bit heavy as we made our way around the steep forest slopes. But chanterelles weren't our only target. We were also looking for sporassus, also known as cauliflower mushrooms. Julie managed to find one and was very excited to harvest it and add it to her bag. I was excited at the thought of getting to eat it. Even the non-edible fungi we were finding were interesting and beautiful to look at, like this artist conch. We also had a few wildlife encounters in the forest, including being checked out by a curious Douglas squirrel, meeting a wary banana slug, and one other very special encounter. We've been going really slowly on our mushroom hunt today, and while we were kind of 
knelt bent down lower on the slope two deer walked by above us i'm not sure if we got them on video we tried but they didn't see us or smell us and so by staying really still we got to watch them for quite a while and while we were watching them the doe took a big dump she pooped right here and i came up and i just tried to find their trail and follow it and i found it it's right here you might not think poop is very exciting but it's pretty cool to be able to find the scat it's a fancy science word for poop right after it was done and it's actually still really warm so we came out here to hunt mushrooms but when you spend time in the forest you never know what else you will find after much debate, we decided to leave the poop behind, but we did come home with a crap load of mushrooms. We cooked some right away. I sauteed some as an hors d'oeuvre while Julie lightly cooked some for use in other recipes. The next morning, I cooked up the cauliflower mushrooms and scrambled them into eggs. They were delicious. If you're thinking about getting into mushroom hunting, please do your research. There are a lot of mushrooms that look alike, and while some are delicious, others may be highly toxic. Nothing presented here is meant to be a guide to mushroom identification. Deer again made regular appearances on our trail cams in September as they continued to sample plants in the beds outside our main garden. Our fencing has continued to be an adequate deterrent to them sampling the plants we don't want them to eat inside the garden. The deer fawns seen in the August homestead hangout have lost their spots and they're beginning to be more independent from their mothers, although they still follow mom's lead when danger is detected. We did have one animal breach our garden fence and it was the cottontail rabbit seen here in the lower right inside the fence. We're pretty sure he squeezed through a weak spot in the wire around one of the garden gates. Julie escorted him out. You'll see him run off to the left here in a moment. And we will reinforce the weak spot to prevent him or other rabbits from returning. Our neighborhood possum is still regularly traveling the trail through our woods, and we're still seeing what we believe is the same cottontail from the August hangout. We thought we might have seen the last of him after catching this glimpse of a bobcat shortly after the rabbit was filmed. But a day or two later, he was back and looking just fine. We also caught a Stellar's Jay looking for a good place to cache a hazelnut. He kept putting it down, covering it, and then picking it back up again as if he was paranoid someone else was going to find it. In reality, he might not even remember where he hid it, and if he doesn't, then we might have a brand new hazelnut tree growing on our homestead in a year or two. In one of our earlier hangouts, we found a pile of feathers that I believed were from a bird killed by a cooper's hawk. Well, this month we caught a cooper's hawk on the trail cam just 15 feet away from that kill site. Toward the end of September, we caught several coyotes on the trail cam who we believe are growing in their winter coats. Their tails were almost too bushy to be believed, and their coats looked a little less sleek than their summer attire. We know many people fear or loathe coyotes, but we are not among them. When we hear them singing in the woods at night, we're always happy to know they're out there, and they are very welcome on our homestead. Julie came outside one September morning to find these wire compost bins squashed flat. We don't put a whole lot of high value food items in these because they are open air, but they still do have some smelly plant scraps and things that somebody had taken an interest in, and we were pretty sure we knew who. We first checked our security cameras that are attached to the back of the house, and we saw something large moving right through this area. After seeing the footage that was caught on the camera that's on the house, I next checked the trail cam that's next to our garden. It looked like the animal was headed this way, but when I reviewed the footage, there was no sign of it. After checking the camera up by the garden, I came down here to the wooded trail and checked our trail cam here, and finally got a good look at the animal that had crushed the compost bin. The culprit was a large black bear, possibly the same one that has visited us before. These animals are the main reason we don't put high value food items in our compost bins. We don't want them becoming habituated to human food sources. It's fine though if they sometimes get curious and flatten the bins. They're fairly easy to bend back into shape. 
As September ends and the fall migration begins, some wild animals will be leaving our homestead while others will arrive. We'll continue to do our best to make this a safe haven for them all. In September, we finally got a chance to tackle a kitchen project we've been wanting to do since we moved in, replacing the microwave over our stove with a proper vent hood. First, we put a piece of plywood on the stove top to give us a solid surface to stand on, removed the microwave, and took down a cabinet. It all went pretty smoothly, and Emmett, the on-site supervisor, was very impressed. But once we put the cabinet back up, attached the hood, and started cutting holes to run the ductwork, he quickly retreated to a less noisy location. We continued to do things with power tools that may or may not have made a licensed contractor cringe. It took a bit of work, but we eventually punched a hole through our outside wall and got the pipe and vent in place without doing any permanent structural damage. And the hood not only looks better than the old microwave, it works great. So all of our labors and hard work and efforts are coming together. We've got our hood in. It's causing all of the smoke and steam to go into the vent and not make our smoke alarm go off. And we've got our mushrooms that we just harvested. We're gonna put on our pizza. Life is good. It's now been a year since we put in the stock tank garden. After grappling with soil issues all spring and summer, we think we finally devised a solution, but more on how we did that later. These bean roots we think would agree. The nitrogen fixing nodules are a sign that our soil health is improving. We'll leave them in the tank to provide nutrients for the next crop. I'm out here doing our summer cleanup and planting our fall crops and somehow we made a classic gardening mistake which is that we overlooked a stink a stinky, a sneaky squash. And here it is. So this is a summer squash in the zucchini family. It's an Italian round variety. It's pretty big at this point for eating. So I think what we're gonna do is instead of eating it fresh, we're gonna slice it into pieces and dehydrate them into chips. But I wanted to share this exciting moment with you of the actual harvest. As part of our soil experiments, we didn't implement any of the solutions on the back 40, which is our patio garden. And we didn't do them in the greenhouse either, and the results showed. The soil remained pretty dry and lifeless, leading to the same qualities in most of the crops. This was most evident in our tomatoes. Can you see that? Yeah. Ooh. That's blossom rot forming. There. This is a sign of uneven watering. And uneven watering is one of the reasons that um, blossom rot can occur. Wow, okay. So what happens is they start to grow and swell and then they get dehydrated and they split. So they shrink when they dehydrate and that splits the skin? And that's one of the many causes of blossom and rot. So to me, this would say, that's probably what happened. These are good, mm -hmm. so we can ripen them on the um, windowsill. Okay. We chose to take the lessons we've learned this year and improve. As you may recall, we think some of the issues stem from soil and straw that were contaminated with herbicides. So our solution started with strong compost. We found a local company that heats theirs high enough to break down herbicides and pathogens. We felt so much hope seeing that big, beautiful pile of rich compost in the driveway. We applied this as a mulch to the perimeter garden, and then in the stock tanks we replaced the top layer of existing soil with compost before mixing it in and adding seeds. We planted some old favorites like dragon's tongue mustard and some new varieties like Portuguese kale. While we can never know what the future holds, we look forward to another season of growing and learning with the garden. So that's it for September. 
But unlike the bear that you saw in the video, we are not going into hibernation. We have a lot of exciting projects in the works that we look forward to sharing with you on future Homestead Hangouts. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments section below. We also invite you to head over to our website at wildhomesteadliving.com and sign up for our newsletter. We send exclusive content out to our community on a regular basis. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Okay, wait. No. Is it this way? Wait. Right. No, wait. Is right this a line dance? Right. <laughs> <laughs>